Hello again and welcome back to our course on PSC 11. In this section we're going to look at folders and catalogues and in many ways this is probably the most important fundamental topic you need to understand to really get the most out of PSC 11. Many people now have hundreds, thousands or even tens of thousands of digital images that they're going to store on their PC and in order to make the best use of PSC 11 particularly in relation to cataloguing those images it's very important that you understand how PSC 11 works in terms of storing and organizing your images and that's what we're going to cover in this section. Now one of the first things I need to point out is that there is no single answer to how should I organize my digital images or how should I organize my media. Different things suit different people but there is one thing in common and that is that you will almost certainly make a better job of storing and organizing your media if you understand what's going on in the background. I get asked quite often, well, how should I store my catalogues? How many catalogues should I have? These sorts of questions. Some of these questions we'll be addressing in this section and later sections on the course. And there isn't one answer, but a few fairly straightforward pieces of information and advice can make all the difference. And the first thing you need to understand that's really going to help is to understand over here what albums is, what my folders is and how folders work in PSC 11. Now the first thing I want to do is to look at folders. We've still got this folder selected which has this name 2012 10 15. These are images that were loaded on that date. And we have one other folder which is music which has got some music. Actually this music is supplied with Elements Organizer 11. So these are media that have come from Adobe. To the right of my folders there is a button that says if I get the tooltip show folder hierarchy and watch what happens to the display now if I click on show folder hierarchy. What I see is a sort of map of where these folders are on my PC. So for instance the music folder here is actually in a folder called 11 which is in a fold 11.0 which is in a folder called elements organizer which is in a folder called Adobe which is in a folder called program data which is in the C drive on my computer now that tells me basically physically where that folder is when I go back to the original view of folders by clicking this icon show folder list you wouldn't necessarily realize that there is a difference between these two folders they're in different places they're different folders and they're in very different places on my computer let me go back into the hierarchical listing again to find the other one let me just go down users again and there it is there's the other one so now you can see the physical location of these folders. Now there are some very important points that follow on from this. One of them is if you go back to the hierarchical map here, at the top you've got pretty much what you get if you look at Windows Explorer in Windows 7 or the equivalent in another operating system you have a shortcut to your My Pictures folder and of course My My Pictures folder has got that same folder with these images in it there you've got the standard personal My Videos with the My Pictures and the My Videos of course will be different for each person logging into this PC you've got the computer itself which is one computer and one C drive and these are the fully detailed routes down to the folders the music folder and that folder with these pictures in it and then you've got the other drives on this computer a D drive an E drive an F drive and a G drive and any of those could have pictures on them as well and in addition to that I've got the network I've also got offline media and what you can see from this, although we haven't done it yet, we're going to do it in just a moment, I could have folders 
in any of these places anywhere within this hierarchical structure with media and I could access them all from within PSC 11. So the first answer to the question where should I put my media or perhaps where should I put my digital images the answer is you can put them pretty much anywhere you like and PSC 11 will cope with them very well wherever they are. So having said that let's look at one or two of the issues that arise. Let's suppose that you share this set of pictures with other people in the family. Other people in the family who may want to maybe not use PSC 11 but access the pictures in another way. Maybe they just want to make their own slideshows with some of the pictures in. If you store all of the pictures in a subfolder of my pictures then on a PC where different people have different access rights and perhaps you can protect some of the content you've got under your username on your PC you're going to restrict people's ability to access some files now that may be exactly what you want it may be that you really do want all of these pictures very secretly hidden away from everybody else in which case putting them in one of your own folders and making sure other people can't see them may be exactly what you want to achieve but if you want other people to be able to see them and have pretty much free use of those pictures of course you're gonna to have to trust them not to go ahead and delete them or replace them with their own pictures then putting them in a public place is a good idea now in terms of how I do things because virtually all of my images are shared with at least one other person we tend to keep all of our images on one of the drives on a PC which we can all access and in fact when it comes to family use we tend to put the pictures onto a network drive although each of them has got their own laptop they can then access the pictures on the network drive now of course you can split your pictures you could say well all of the holiday pictures I'm going to put on the network drive and perhaps some of my personal pictures or ones that I've taken at work or to do with work I'll put in my my pictures folder the point to bear in mind here though is that you don't have to put them all in one place you can put them in different places and the choice of where to put them is a very personal choice now I hope that you're starting to get an idea of why it's so important to decide where to keep these media and looking at issues like keeping media in private places, keeping them in public places, putting them on a network, these are all fundamental decisions that you're going to have to take yourself. But I want to give you another aspect of this which is also very important. Bear in mind that with thousands of images, in my family's case, on network drives, if you take your laptop on the train to go out for the day, perhaps to do with work or to go away for the weekend by train or even to go away on holiday with your laptop the network drive will not be available and therefore you will not be able to access those images now on that occasion you may take them on a portable external drive you may use some other offline device but it's another important factor the network drive sounds like a good idea if you've got a network at home or at work but when you're not at the network you won't be able to access what's in it so things do get a little more complicated and it makes it even more important that you make the right decision in deciding where to keep things so now I'm going to demonstrate a couple of very important things in relation to what I've just been talking about now what I'm going to do first is to import one image from a folder on one of my network PCs. So I've got a Windows network here and in order to import from an existing file or folder then I use one of the other options on the import button here. We've already seen how to import from an SD card and we're going to go to from files and folders. Now where you have images that you've got say on a CD or that you've already saved perhaps from your camera in an earlier time or maybe even that you've downloaded from the internet from files and folders you click on that 
and all you really need to do is to go to the folder where the image or images are kept. Now I'm going to go down here to network, choose one of the network computers here, Tiburon is the one I'm going to use, and there are two folders on there and the one users has got a single image in it that I want in my catalog so open that up there's the image I want and it's been imported now note if I look over here now at the folder structure you can see I've got a third new folder now the little icons within each of the yellow folder symbols tell us that this is actually a folder with some images, some media or something in it. And here we can see that Tiburon Users is one of the folders with some content in it. If I go back to the list view for the folders, of course in its appearance it looks the same as the other folders. It's on a completely different computer to the other two. It looks the same. You can tell it's a different computer in Windows though because these little backslash symbols tell you that it's a computer on the network and then the folder is called users. Now what I'm going to do having imported that is to close that computer down and we'll just see what happens. So I've shut down the Tiburon computer altogether. Let's see what happens now as I look at the content of my folders. They're the swans. That's the music. Now you might have thought, well, we're not actually going to see that if the computer's shut down. Well, as you'll see, we're actually very restricted. It's kept a thumbnail. But let's see what happens if I try to do something to the picture. And even before that, let's look at that little icon in the top left hand corner. Because that little red icon there says offline. This picture is not available. The catalogue has a thumbnail of the image. But if I wanted to actually work on the image, I wouldn't be able to. Now let me show you what would happen. I'm going to use a contextual menu here. Right click on that and say edit with Photoshop Elements Editor. Now, find offline drives. It won't let me do it because that particular image is offline. So the catalogue knows there's an image there and even has a thumbnail to it and the information about the image. You can see that information, location, including the network drive and so on. If I look at the metadata, let's look at the small amount of metadata there, file properties. It's got some basic metadata try the full listing, the complete listing of metadata and because it's not available it can't show me the full listing of metadata and again if you want to view the complete metadata you're going to need to make that image online again. So let's now turn our attention to catalogues. What is a catalogue? Well a catalogue is a set of pieces of information about media. The pieces of information do not include the images themselves. The images are held on our PC in any one of a number of different locations. And what the catalogue consists of, first of all, for each piece of media, the location of that piece of media. So that image, that sound file or whatever it might be. It also includes, in the case of images, a thumbnail of the image. And it also includes some of the metadata about the item in the catalogue. So when you create a catalogue, you're really creating a set of pieces of information about media which are on your computer. And when you start using PSE 11, you get a new catalogue. You may have a catalogue from an earlier version of PSC, which you may need to convert between versions. And you can, in fact, have more than one catalogue. So, for instance, you could have a family catalogue, you could have a work catalogue, you could have a private catalogue or one associated with a particular hobby, particular pastime or whatever. But there are one or two important things you need to know about catalogues in order to plan your catalogues correctly. And in fact the overall use of PSC 11 will depend on you not only planning the folder strategy well, where you're going to keep things, 
but also your catalogue strategy as well. And we're going to look at catalogues in more detail in the next section. So please join me for that.